Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Side of Sauce podcast, starring, of course, as always, your favorite Hispanic goblin and everyone's favorite sexy bisexual Disney XD star, my co-host. Your bo- it's your boy, Johnny. It's your big boy. Back at it again. Uh, back at it again with another podcast. And uh, I would feel remiss uh, just a little bit if I did not bring, of course, of a recent passing that happened. Which one in particular? Uh, I don't usually get emotional at like, mm-hmm. celebrity deaths, but Kevin Conroy, who passed like a like I think from recording date, I think like a, like a week ago. Really? Like, yeah. Dude, I didn't hear anything about that. Yeah, Kevin Conroy passed away because he had like cancer. That shit was like I haven't been upset about like a a celebrity passing since like I think Chadwick Boseman probably. Was oh, like, Chadwick was that was really upset, dude. What? Chadwick Boseman that really upset me because I, I had no clue again like see unfortunately I don't pay I don't keep up to date on these things like the only thing I'm on social media for is memes and yeah. like like very specific DIY kind of videos and stuff so like I, I never see this thing so like I just wouldn't out of the blue I was like my god Chadwick Boseman died today like what oh my god yeah because like he he is the quintessential Batman to me he is when I, when I picture Batman in my head he is like the first voice and like mainly designed too that I like associate with the character, uh, the Batman the animated series, the original one like. Oh, I, I loved that. Yeah, yeah, that show is so good. Even like if I rewatch it now, it's still super fucking good. Like, it, just great. I I'm just upset about it. It's uh, it's unfortunately happened. And uh, I think someone else also like recently died. Uh oh, the, the Green Power Ranger guy. I forget his name, but I remember seeing. I did going see on. that. I did see that. Yeah, unfortunately. So I wasn't a big power. Well, I was, and I wasn't. I loved the Power Ranger toys as a kid. Yeah. Like I got a bunch of them, especially the ones that could recom combine or whatever. Like they were like animal and like you know these like s- human animal hybrid like mech things, and they were really cool. Mm-hmm. So I loved the toys, but I did not give two darns about the uh, show or anything. Yeah, I did. I watched it. Like it was like one of the, like the last like uh kid shows I watched when I was, like, 10, maybe. And I was, like, I was kind of getting into it, and then, like, I hit that age where I was, like, oh, I'm too good for these. Like, well, I hit the mood of, like, I'm too good to watch these fucking kids' cartoons. Let me go watch something more adult on Cartoon Network kind of thing. big kid now. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. And, uh, yeah, it was, like, one of the last ones. But I distinctly remember seeing a lot of it, not because I chose to watch it, but because my siblings actually loved and adored the Power Rangers, especially my younger sister. She fucking loved them. So I saw a lot of it as a when I was younger, but I didn't actually like get too like attached to them, uh, almost like the Ninja Turtles in the same way. I get that, yeah. There are like things that I kind of liked from a distance. I wasn't super invested in per se, but I did appreciate them from like a distance. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a uh, like a staple. Like you know when you like whenever you see a classic '80s thing, they always have like staples. Like you see a Walkman or something where they have like yeah. a coca-cola new coke thing or that was up there to the kind of like there's like staple iconic like things like that well yeah, that was kind of like that time period yeah i get that also like another fascinating thing that i that i've recently discovered about is is something i think is super curious in like the scientific field because they it's the concept of bringing extinct species back to life and it's ah. not like a, yeah this isn't like a jurassic park thing this is like for real they're deciding now like is it ethical to bring back species that we've, like, killed off or have been dead. What do you think? Uh, they're specifically... The specific example that they're trying to do is the thylacine, or more commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger, which was okay. actually killed off, like, not too long ago. I think it's less than 80 years ago. Definitely less than 100, but I think it's, like, less than 80. Where, like, they had, like, a huge population of them in, uh... I think it was Australia... But they kept getting blamed for, like, ruining livestock, like, Mm. killing livestock and ruining crops. But they were, like, not the animal at all, but they were, like, murdered. They were hunted down. They were perfect, uh, what's it called, uh, subject to blame all the time. It was a scapegoat. Escape, yeah, that's weird, yeah, but they're the perfect scapegoat. I've never understood that word, scapegoat. It sounds weird. It's one of those words when you you see it spelled out to you, because, like, you never... I feel like you hear it said, but you never really see it written anywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like it's kind of weird looking because like, sometimes you can. I think I've seen it written like it's one word, right? Like I think it's a random word. 
Uh, I always thought it was. Let me see. Let me make sure, because I might be stupid, but I thought it was two words. No, click us on word. Uh, scape. Yep, yep. You are right. It is. It is one word. Scapegoat. Yeah, which is like it just looks weird. It doesn't look right. As, it does I only not. remember it that doesn't... it's one word because it doesn't look right. I'm like, oh, I remember that word. That word looks fucking stupid. Yeah, I I would assume that would be a two letter word. The, the English language is so fucking weird, crazy. I hate the concept of silent letters so much. Dude, I have this idea that they should like. So I have this idea that we should rewrite the way like we use English because English is one of the most commonly spoken languages because it's just you know big America spreads around everywhere. Yeah. And Europe in general, a lot of you know England. Anyways, mm -hmm. so if that's the case, why not just make it easier to learn and stuff and use? If they if we could simplify the the alphabet so that like there's no repeated symbols so we we go to from c to k whatever and then for any time that there is a change in the pronunciation we make a new character for that so that every character has exactly one way to pronounce it so maybe you have 45 letters yeah but you can read it in one way and everyone can immediately recognize that's what it means I so that you don't have to try and spell chartreuse out and shoot yourself in the head yeah that, that i i don't even know where to start with that one but like the the thing with me in like I think I think uh one of the dumbest things in any language is silent letters. I don't get the point of them. It doesn't really make sense to me. I I mean it makes sense to me from what I've heard. People of the way someone uh but one of my history teachers explained it to me. He was a history and uh, English. Mm -hmm. He was like basically it's like when you have words that become either combined or whatever or words that just change over time the pronunciation so like for instance when we have a word it might be pronounced one way but it's back at a certain point it was pronounced another way or vice versa and so they mold and shift over time the, the way people like they like some people with a i'm trying to think of a southern you know accent they say things very differently y'all that's not even like a, a word in the you know like i don't know other places Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, but like we, they they change and they morph, so you have like the just the, the remnants of that stuff mixed in from. So you have all that French mixed into English, and you have the a little bit of Spanish. You have Germanic, you have Slavic. I don't even know what else you have, honestly. I just yeah. know there's a lot. Yeah, I just I I kind of get the point of them because I've heard like if you put like a say in pterodactyl, I think it's like yeah if he. It's followed by whatever I forget what letter comes after. PT. I, PT. I think, yeah, it makes yeah. like a specific sound from because it's borrowed. They're, most of the English letters are like not English letters, English words are like bothered borrowed from other languages. So Latin. Like I kind of get it. Yeah, because it's not supposed to make the same sound. But I, to me, it's like if you're we're gonna borrow words to mean something. It's kind of crazy. Like, I think it's it's more a case of, like, if you're going to combine two words, say you and your friends start combining, we start combining two words. Maybe we, like, so I texted you the other day, we said dog tired. Maybe yeah. we start using that as a single word and it kind of become, picks up. Over time, it could be easy for it to get changed and you want to be able to understand exactly what word it might be. So it might be pronounced different. We might say dog tired or whatever, or dig tired something else we say something different but like it'd be spelled that way and then if we slowly shortened it or whatever it's just like one little shift from you and then maybe two generations later there's a little shift later and a little it's bit by bit okay okay i kind of okay I'm, I'm getting what you're digging it's kind of like evolution like you know like dude it broke my mind when i realized like it's like there's no such thing as a species it's just what we perceive because that's all we can we only see it at a certain point the species yeah, but it's like see it from a certain perspective because we're seeing it like how it is right now, as opposed to really, if you were to like, you know, what those videos where they always show like the animal evolving from one to the other, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, tell me where the dog goes from wolf to or wolf to dog. You know, like it, it, you really can't choose a certain point. So it's like this. There's also when I found that out, I was like, my mind was like broken for a week, dude. I was like, oh, what, dude? Honestly, yeah. Like thinking about evolution and how crazy it is. Like the fact that like uh, like just the idea that like that life could have kind of just sprung from nowhere. It could have just been like a random happenstance. It's so fucking, fucking interesting. Because it's like... It, it, it blows my mind. Like, even thinking about it right now, just like, I, I'm I'm trying to find words for it, but it's just, it is mind-boggling. They do not mind exist. It is crazy. Oh, and just the, the sheer, just just everything about it. It's, just, it's an overwhelming concept. Just nothing, not nothing, but like... 
just simple things can lead one thing leads to another and just it creates all like life and everything it's crazy it, really, it is really crazy it really is crazy how this universe was made but it also makes me think like a like a, that feeling of like having like your mind blown language is also one of those things for me just like really taking a step back and thinking about it yeah i'm looking at it like being so highly evolved enough to like make specific like sounds so you can have like complex conversations and thoughts spoken with each other and not just complex ones like more complex than other complex you know like smart species and stuff exactly like a different level because like i it made me because like it, it was one of those things i thought about as a while for a kid it was like like does a dog like when it, when it's speaking it does it speak in its head and does it when it speaks does it like bark in its head yeah, yeah, it's like one of those. I things. gotta be honest. I think we'll never know. I don't think we'll ever know. I don't, I don't think, think you uh, can really answer that. I don't think a dog really talks in its head. I think, I think, uh, I think they do have complex thoughts, but it's more, but it's you know more simple. It's more. I think, I think dogs, it's like I think trying dogs, to see a new color. Yeah, but like we have our perspectives. Like we see the way we think. How can, you can't? I, I couldn't even comprehend how my gerbil or my hamster. Or my fish would even comprehend the world around it from its perspective. Like, so I, I couldn't even imagine. I think, I think if, if any of the one person saw like a new color that like they, like you couldn't describe to anyone else because it looks nothing like any other color and they saw that, I think they would honestly like go insane. It would fuck. You, have you read the uh, H.P. Lovecraft's the this color from outer space? No. That's a really good short story. Is it, it kind of like talks about? Described? It is. There's just a meteor that comes down in the middle of like like Massachusetts, or whatever, and countryside, and it just something just off about it. It just slowly the area around it starts seeming more vibrant, almost as if it's like not animated, but like it has a vibrancy colors, and it just over time the, the colors start appearing in nature that literally they cannot describe, and it starts breaking the people's minds there. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, been, it's bustle on God. I've been meaning to check out a lot of H.P. Lovecraft's like works because it's, I've like just the concepts that you hear about from like passing. Or, oh like, yeah, just like seeing them like a uh, parody or adapted in like in movies and other books, it's mm -hmm. like so cool. It it really I think honestly, and I I have to excuse okay. the elephant in the room of his cat's name, but you know I think he's honestly like one of the best horror uh he probably is like one of the best horror uh authors uh, like of all time i i gotta agree you know you know i i've, I've always been a advocate of a uh, separate the art from the artist yeah and whatnot you can appreciate both but it doesn't mean you you shouldn't be able to separate them it's probably how like but, um, fans feel right now yeah mr Oof. Yee, my bad i don't even know like man I, that poor guy i don't know if he's off his meds or what's going on but he, he's 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 not happening. I think he is most definitely off his meds. Like, for sure. But, mm -hmm. I was going to say, we were just... No, the HBO for Oh. Shoot. God, I hate when I do that when I lose my train of thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so... His... It's crazy because he's an artist, you know, and, like, they always, you always hear this trope of, like, the tortured artist. Well, he really, truly seems like the, a person that was truly tormented by his, like, his, his mental issues and his mental illnesses and just all... You know, he was troubled by so many weird weird quirks and like he was like obsessed i think he married his like second cousin or something or third cousin or something like that yeah he was really weird and racist even for his time he was I weird think, and racist i think the i've thought a lot about like that whole conversation of separating the art from the artist and i i think i think i i personally am very it's very easy for me to do that uh, i, I agree for some yeah people it's not but i think uh when it comes to that kind of stuff I think one of the only, like, spots where it doesn't really... For me, at least, I see it coming up more and more as a problem is uh, music. How so? Because I think uh, I think music is more... It's more personal, like, form of art than, uh, like, a lot of other stories are. Cap. Oh, I disagree. I disagree. I, I, I think it can be, but I think most of the time, music, it, it can be more personal, but it's more whimsical than anything. Because, like... A lot of the stories and you know, like the things people talk about, they talk about some things that are related, but a lot of it's embellished and changed, or you know, like, mm -hmm. um, like created stuff. You know, you're not just necessarily telling a story based exactly. I feel like and some some of them are, but like a lot of, I think, I think it's less personal, honestly, than a lot of other forms. I think it's more personal because you like both literally and figuratively like hear their voice, 
Like you will literally That's true. Hear, that is yeah, a good you point. You literally hear like them like saying these things, and like when it comes to like a book, it's not like you know the author literally speaking these words to you. So you get associated with his voice. Oh, and, like, I love him as a person. audiobooks read by the author are the best. Dude, yeah, honestly. They really are because they like they go all out on like everything. The or, like he, every now and then I'll be listening to an audiobook. You, you, have you ever had that? And like and you can just tell the guy's enjoying it. He's he's just popping off with yeah, like the just, voices and he's stuff. He's enjoying it. The the guy who does the Harry Potter uh like the famous Harry Potter uh, audiobooks. Yeah, he does really good. He does a really good job. He he makes it really uh, interesting with like with his long little voices and all the things he does for each character because he'll speak differently for them and it's impressive how you like uh. He can do like a pretty good Hagrid and uh, the main the main uh, witch lady. I forget her name. Oh, Hermione. Do you, <laughs> do you know who like one of the best voice actors slash actresses is I've ever heard? Who? So like my significant other really likes good uh, Mythical Morning a lot, mm. where she likes to watch it in the background a lot of times at least. Okay. And they have one of their I can't I think it's Jamie's her name and she's one of like the she's like the announcer for the show, but she has this like perfect like voice where it's just it, it's just the most satisfying i could listen to her read off like my taxes and i'd be like oh yeah that sounds good that sounds good she just has this very nice relaxed and clear voice it's it's just so fun i was like i was like dang it she should read audiobooks dude dude honestly like one of the like one of i think of uh, the best voices ever to hear is morgan freeman's oh morgan freeman's a great voice morgan freeman uh, morgan freeman could call me slurs and i would probably like listening to it that is true. I think that's one thing. That's a, a big thing for actors and actresses is their accents. You know, I think about like some of my favorite ones. They have very distinct voices. Like Samuel L. Jackson has a very iconic voice. Mm-hmm. Very you distinct. got like Robin Williams. Like you can always tell it's Robin Williams. You got Will Smith. Uh, who's the Who's the guy who played Iago? Iago in what? Aladdin. Aladdin. I got. No clue. The original? I don't know. Yeah, the original. I'm gonna look it up because that guy, he he is a fucking like a, like a iconic voice. Oh, Eartha Kitt. My gosh, she played uh, what's the the pole the lever crunk? Oh, yeah, that fucking wrong so... lever. Oh, Gilbert Godfrey. That's the man. He's a. Uh... He's a very clear, distinct voice that, like, I could not mistake anyone else saying. I do get that. He was, uh, I think the last role he did before he, like, unfortunately passed, like, I think a year ago. He, uh, he was in the show Smiling Friends. And he played God. A very fitting end. God, he is just like me for real. Just like me for real. Have you seen that show Smiling Friends? No, I have not. Dude. I've seen bits of it all over the place like like, clips here and there but not too much of it yeah dude honestly you should like definitely like swing by come over and like we'll watch it because like it is like genuinely i think up your alley it is a really yeah i've heard every pretty much i don't think i've heard a single person even from like the i I like to watch a very wide variety of things from people that i totally disagree with the like things that i agree with like but i haven't seen a single bad thing about that show from anyone even the super snobby critics are like oh yeah it's great it's so passion driven so like that's just it it looks pretty good really funny like genuinely funny show and has like cute little uh because it's made by like youtubers like well yeah the youtube animators who like got the job it was so like uh they have like a bunch of internet humor in there that's like also not Mm. fucking cringe Mm. which is you know surprising possible i was gonna is that possible because they got, uh, what's his name to make a cameo? The guy who does the number 15. Really? They have They him? have a cameo for him in that show. Bruh. And it's, like, actually kind of funny. That's hilarious. What does he, what does he talk about? What does he he's, say? He's, like, in a, he, like, Pim goes into a little, like, the little pink guy. He goes into a restaurant looking for, like, this girl. And then there's a guy in front talking to the waiter. And he's like, hmm, I'll have the number 15. Can I have the number 15? God, he is just like me for real. He just wants the number 15. Bro, on God, just like me for real, the number 15. Dude, speaking of like, it made me think of fast food. So I recently, it was recently Thanksgiving, and I went to go visit my dad uh, down in South Carolina. And on my way, I was taking all my siblings with me, and we stopped by a wendy's 
like halfway okay. through our trip because we were like, oh, let's grab some dinner before we get there. Yeah, why not? And then we all order, and I pay for it, and uh, all of my siblings get, get their food. Oh, you don't. Except me. These fucking <laughs> as it assholes. should be. As it should be. It should be that way more often, honestly. You don't deserve it, James. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I, pay, I worked my hard ass off for that minimum wage job. I'm just kidding. But, like, yeah, I was I was too far away. I didn't want to fucking speaking go of which, Speaking of which, not, not, not to interrupt really quick. I have a quick question. Are they raising your wage? Because I see a lot of jobs that are raising up to 15 minimum. They're not raising mine. Mine is still like that's bullshit. Yeah. That's some bullshit, dog. Because I was gonna say, like, I would, I would hope they would, because like before a while ago, they were like where you work was pretty competitive uh, pay for you know a starting just hourly rate or whatever for like customer yeah. service slash whatever. I don't know what you call it, like that, that kind of job, retail job. Mm-hmm. But like now it's like it's it's starting to fall behind. Unfortunately, like, dude, they need, they need to pay y'all more because y'all have to put up with so much, dude, honestly, so many crackheads. Yeah. So many fucking insane people. It is astounding. I I would uh, personally, for everyone, I think it should be required to work at least in fast food or, uh, what's that fucking shit called? The store people. I don't. Yeah, the store. Fast people. food retail. Yeah, retail. Uh, customer service. What, I was fucking. I was blanking on retail. You good? But yeah. If... Dog. I remember my favorite thing working at uh when I worked at Walmart was that um. Some dude that was super fucking high, and you could smell like you could smell his weed in the bathroom. Yeah. Like this man was bussing. He apparently he had been there all day, and <laughs> right before close, whatever, he was talking, muttering some shit under his voice. He's by the electronic section, and he just turns like turns ninety degrees real fast to his left, and he just does the fastest little jab and punches the fuck out of the laptop and it just goes flying backwards <laughs> across the department and slides on the ground and he just like turns real fast and <laughs> he just kind of keeps walking off like still muttering the whole time. I was just like I were walking by it and I was like what is I didn't even bother to stop I was like a fuck no I'm not worried about this but he had an unlit cigarette like in his mouth the entire time like all time he was in the store it was Holy so fucking shit. funny dude he didn't like... light it or anything, at least. Like, he just had his hanging out of his mouth, like, wiggling around as he was muttering shit. Oh my goodness. It's like the... Sounds like, like, the worst Street Fighter character of all time. <laughs> what are the, what's that, that uh, martial arts thing where you pretend to be a drunken dude or whatever? Uh, it's like that. Yeah, like, the... I forget what it's called, but, like, the way of the drunk... Like, the drunken style or, like, the way of the drunken man? I, it, I thought that when I was a when I was a kid, I thought that was like only like a thing in cartoons. I didn't think that was like a real thing. Only to find Drunk out years fist. later that like yeah, this is like a real like way that people can like learn to fight. Apparently, that only works like I don't know. It, it, I guess it doesn't work as much as you think. You have to be people that are unaware. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, yeah, I feel like. At the same time, it's obvious, but it also isn't if you think about it. Yeah. That's not going to work. If you're, like, in a professional fight, they're going to know you're at least competent. Like, they're not going to be co- like, oh, this guy's drunk. They're not going to believe that. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's obviously fucking bluffing. Yeah. You know, it's honestly kind of, like, surprising how, like, the gap between, like, a, like professional fighters and, like, a regular people are. I, how so? I don't know. Like, I just think about it because, like, when you think about fighting, isn't like a necessarily like a, not like a, you. It doesn't seem all that special, you know. You just you punch someone, but it, like it's crazy that like you can get punched by like you know someone who isn't trained, isn't like experienced, and it will hurt probably. But like if an oh, experienced hurt. person it'll punches hurt. you, you you might die. You might be lights out, gone. Depends what they. Yeah, they can. They can. Some people can one shot you. They got that. Uh. I mean, see, I was going to make a Destiny 2 reference, but you wouldn't have gotten it. No, probably would not. I, Dude, I'm so, I'm still trying to play the game. I'm, I'm having fun. with he, Destiny's thing with me is that I like playing the game. It's a fun game. I like the daily, mm-hmm. like, I like, you know, going by and, like, doing all the little shooting things. It feels good to play the game. The UI is just, what the fuck is this? User interface is whack. It's more the beginner player's, like, st- Stream is not very streamlined, but yeah. um, what was I gonna say? Fuck, god dang, I just lost. I literally thought of it and then I lost my train of thought. But yeah, like uh, oh, I've been. You know those memes where they're overly descriptive and they'd be like, 
POV me. My little yeah. brother says something, something, something. And then it'd be like parentheses. He doesn't know whatever. So, but I've been making very specific ones that are just like only the like the three of us get it because they're like the three hardcore Destiny players that are understanding what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, but POV me. <laughs> My brother just punched me, but I just broke his overshield. Now I'm amplified. Parentheses. He doesn't know I have thunderclap. And, and but, but I've been making these really specific memes and sending them to Maddie and stuff. It, it's been so fucking funny because he's been sending some shit back to. Hold up, I have a question about Destiny. What? Can you can you uh can you name your weapon? Like name your weapon anything? No, unfortunately not. Man, because I saw those like a uh, those memes back in the day when you guys were sending them to our like a group chat and like the the weapons, but they oh, were named, every like, gun name names. is every gun name is a special name. There is not a single gun that has a bad name. Okay, okay. Like, everything is a joke or a reference to something. At some level, it just depends. I'm I'm loading it up right now, so I can let me load up Dim. Dim is the uh, web browser version you can like access mm -hmm. it. But everything has a meaning for the name. So certain weapon archetypes, like they have the they have, they have all the like so like they have the detail down to the forges, which forge makes this gun or makes these kinds of guns. Yeah. And the forges will have different things associated with them. So like for instance, uh, all of these ones, I believe it's from. It's not. What is it? It is the. Suros. Suros is one of the weapon founders, the guys that make the weapons. Yeah. Their weapons always just happen to be just – they have a reloading grants, this weapon bonus handling, and all of their weapons share a common theme. They're named after musical like keys. I, I don't know. I haven't done piano in years and choir and even longer. So, But like this one's called the Staccato. They have the – what's the SMG? It's like the – tempo they have all these different like music somewhat musically themed ones there's a bunch of different guns like that and then they'll have other ones that follow other different themes and stuff so every gun is an it, it's very detailed but i love it like they have meme names all the time okay yeah like <laughs> they're all like uniquely named right like all different well there's there's certain guns so, like there's gun frames which is like there's lightweight adaptive aggressive mm -hmm. and then maybe there's another type or two i can't remember but essentially besides that that's just the frame and each frame has a certain thing lightweight makes you move faster aggressive does slightly more damage adaptive is just kind of a bit between the two or whatever and there's other frames mm -hmm. and each gun will be like a certain frame so like i have the sniper rifle here and it's an aggressive frame i have this one here it's an adaptive frame Hmm. And then each one of those guns will be a certain skin or model, and then that frame – and it'll have a certain perk pool it can roll with. So it could roll with these certain perks, and these are the ones that only it can roll with. So like it, a little bit of grind, but that – it is part of it, the grind, but you grind out for what you want in the weapon basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because like it's impressive to me how many – like you know how all of them are named and like how many weapons and like armor and gear there are in that game. Because I, like, looked it up, I was like, because I thought it was only, like, you know, maybe a couple bits. Like, a good size. No, they have, it has more than Call of Duty. It's not as much as I want them to because they have a lot of gear that's been sunset, which is where back in the day they basically kind of, like, made it so you can't play it in anything competitive yeah. or high-leveled. So you can use it on, like, low-level shit, but, like, you can't bring anything from that that's been sunset. We're not going to sunset anything else in the future, but there's still a bunch of stuff that was nice that's been sunset before okay. Checkers Zone. But they still have a larger pool than like Titanfall or Halo or Call of Duty combined. That, mm, hmm. You know what? I'm just thinking because you brought up Halo, and I was like, I have like a massive amount of like back catalog of games that I want to play. And Halo uh, Infinite mm -hmm. was one of them because like it's a really fun game. Have you played it yet? I have played a little little bit, and I got my ass just just can't be royally man oh yeah me too i'm i'm not the greatest at halo honestly not my best i I, I i'm not that to brag but i think i used to be very good at halo but mm -hmm. i was I, I was not i have not played a controller in so long i tried to play it and i was like i just got blown apart i was like oh my god like ah! hmm? on controller on controller it was at gabe's house oh okay yeah yeah dude honestly it is like it, it's way easier for me to understand controllers, probably because it's, you know, how I've been playing, like, my whole... Basically, my whole life up until this point. But I've tried yeah. playing with mouse and keyboard, and it does not make sense to me. It does not compute in my brain. 
I did not. I used to go for the longest time. I would re. So you can basically Steam is like you know a mm -hmm. program on your thing. It can launch your games. If a game is not able to be acquired through Steam, you can still quote unquote add it to your library, and then go in and customize your controls through Steam. So even if it's like Minecraft, Minecraft is owned through Mojang, Microsoft. It is not associated with Steam, but you can add it through Steam so that you can then make controller customization. And I used to do that for every game I had. So I could play on my controller until Destiny came around. And there's so many different options, I just gave up with my mm -hmm. fucking controller. Dude. It took an hour of fucking button crafting <laughs> to make a good loadout or a good button combination for my controller. And at that point, I was like, dude, I'm going to cry. Like, it is so con they're, they're... It's yeah, so yeah. convoluted. There's a lot. It's, it's not that. It's that I make it convoluted. Oh, when okay. you chase the meta and you are... Just sweat, you know, mm -hmm. uh... Imagine see us go sweats, but for Destiny 2, that's me. Yeah, honestly, but, like, you know, everybody get that sweat kind of game. Everyone has that game where they're like, you, you, you probably go a little bit harder than you, you should have. A little bit. Just a little. How, how many hours do you have in your most game, by any chance? I'm just curious. Uh, I know my most played game is either... I think it's, I think it literally is probably just Super Smash Brothers. And I definitely have, like, m in a stupid amount, like, I think almost over 400 hours in that game on the Switch alone. So, I know when I played Titanfall just on Xbox alone, I had over a week's worth of straight play. But just for your reference, Destiny 2, and this is not counting my time I played in Destiny 1 or Destiny 2 on other devices, like yeah. the Xbox. Because I played a lot of the Xbox at main. But on my PC, I have 1,929 hours and a half. Holy shit. I've only been playing Destiny 2 for a year and a half. It's a heroin. <laughs> it's just that good stuff that keeps you coming back. No, it's god awful, but <laughs> it doesn't let me go. <laughs> Dude, that's what I love. I love the memes about uh, like just uh, just abusive games. Yeah, the Destiny players they just they love their game, but they fucking hate it. Cause it Dog, feels true when you play. The it. other morning, I woke up early. I woke up at like. 5 a.m. and I was like, so there's these things in the game called Nightfalls, and they're high level. Me, so like me and it's fire team mm -hmm. versus uh, PVE, but it's very, very hard. I mean, like insanely hard. If you don't have the right shield damage type, you don't have the right champion. Mind. There's all these different things. So it's very hard. And I joined this group, and they were like, they posted a thing on a uh, Discord. They're like, yeah, looking for a casual group, you know. Let's be chill. Let's have a good time. You know, don't be too rushing. Whatever. I join the thing. The immediately, the first thing I do is they're like, "Hey, bro, your your loadout's not gonna cut it. It's <laughs> it's trash. You gotta cut. You gotta change your exotic armor. You gotta change your armor mods. You gotta change your champion mods." I was like, "I'm running unstoppable and anti barrier. That's what we need to run." He's like, "No, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. You need to run this anti barrier and this unstoppable whatever." And I just like left the call and I was like, "Bro, I'm not playing this." <laughs> So I went and did Gambit, which is kind of PvP and PvE combined. Mm -hmm. Basically, you do some PvE stuff, and then you get into points, and you can invade or get invaded by the other team, and you can go over and fight each other. Um, Yo, Classic Clans. And if, it was it's a, it's a fun game mode. People hate on it, but it's fun. I get it, and the guy immediately starts ragdolling on all of us in the voice <laughs> chat and in the team chat, too. And I'm like, bro, what is this guy fucking on about? He and not to lie, he is doing good. He is getting so anytime we get invaded by another player from the enemy team, mm -hmm. he would usually get the kill. He got the majority, he got about 80% of the kills. And he invaded a couple times and he got about like five or six kills. And then, you know, we get our fi we finally get enough points to some of the, the final boss and we're fighting it, doing whatever. And we get to this thing where there's a buff and it's time six. And I pop my super with my exotic and I knock that boss down to one HP. Mm -hmm. And the guy, whatever, whatever, and then. We get uh, fucking invaded, and the guy invades. So the guy that's on shit talking invades left. Long story short, we lose. And then I look at the stats at the end, and he did one percent of damage. Whoa! And I did forty nine percent. And so like he was like ragdolling. He was like, "Hey man, you got no kills." And I was like, "Damn, he's right. I did get no kills." And then I looked at the points. And I was like, "Bro, like you were one really percent." I was like, what are you talking about? But I was like, I literally got off the game and I was like, I, I'm going to go to school because that's less stressful than this shit. Like, I just fucking went to class. God damn. Don't tell me college class too. No, I'm in kindergarten again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it be. But like, it also made me think, because you were mentioning like uh, the voice chat. And recently, mm -hmm. one of my favorite, like, 
One of my favorite ways to like instantly make me laugh is to go through like old Xbox 360 oh, like uh, kind of like voice chats. Those are, like funny. That just makes you cringe, dog. <laughs> I get that. I get that they're cringe. Some of them are, but I think some of them are like genuinely funny. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. There's there's one that always makes me laugh. It's like a uh, this guy. There's this kid on the mic and he's like screaming and he's yelling about something. I, I don't me? really understand what he's yelling about. And like this guy points the rifle, he snipes who like the guy in front of in him. Game, hope. In kids... game, right? No. It's in <laughs> in... in game is the fucking sniper, not in real life. Damn, I was like, yo, this man committing no. felonies. No, this is Call of Duty. <laughs> so the guy so the guy has the rifle, he shoots like the guy the player in front of him, and he dies, and the kid as soon as like the rifle goes off the bang, the kid like mics goes silent. It's so it just sounds like a kid <laughs> got sniped. Poor and guy. It's so fucking he, just funny. Got, he just got murked, dog. That wasn't even fire. He just played him. Bro took him off the servers. And the real life server, dude. That's just a rip. But yeah, I some of them are kind of like cringe. Like some of them are like you know trying too hard to bully, and it's just it doesn't work. Just like me for real. Yeah. But there are a good portion of them that are like really genuinely hilarious, and I do laugh at them. But they are also fucking terrible. Fair enough. I do agree with that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Uh, what else we got to talk about today? The Among Us lore. The Among Us lore? Ooh, here's one. Uh, so recently, it was Thanksgiving, and I went down to my yes. dad's, you know, as we discussed a little bit before. And there was a bit, so my dad, whenever we gather together, whether for holidays or mm-hmm. for, like, you know, just random events, uh, he likes to put TV or movies on, you know, just in the background, just to, like, listen to. Uh, and, like, enough. right before Thanksgiving, he put on this show called, uh, Celeb- like, Celebrity Hauntings, I think. And so I go over there, and I'm okay. like, okay. I'm thinking this is a show about, like, the ghost of celebrities haunting people. Mm-hmm. Only to find and out. And what no, is it actually? No, it's it's a show about celebrities being haunted. And I only found that out, like, midway through the episode. I was like, wow, these people are fucking familiar. I, I think I've seen <laughs> some of them before. Probably you got haunted by some maidens, dog haunted by some maidens i was talking to my dad i was like man i thought this was gonna be like somebody getting haunted like the ghost of like michael jackson and they can hear thrilling in their closet every night (laughs) dude i wish as long as 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 you come out and grab my child dog that's all good every every time you have to get up in the middle of the night underneath your bed you just hear hee hee I would be a little scared. I I would be more scared from the hee hee than I would be like a like a like a hand grabbing it. Because at least I can understand, you know, the hand with the fucking. If someone goes hee hee, I'm confused and scared, and that makes me more terrified. God, I do. I would be terrified. Also, another thing I was talking about when I was over at my dad's house is kind of stupid, but. I want to ask, what, what animal do you think would be the most useful in a zombie in a zombie apocalypse? Useful for just period? Yeah, just useful in period to survive or do other things with. Honestly, I think the most useful would probably either be a dog. A dog? Or something you could slaughter immediately and get a lot of food dried out of. Okay, yeah. Those are the two options. So either something that can defend and guard and keep me safe and I can, you know, like, rely on, also have companionship, because honestly, mental, your mental battle's gonna get pretty fucking hard in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. That's a great thing about the dog, or it would have to be that cow or big-ass animal that I can slaughter and maybe dry or cook or something and get a lot of stuff out of, you know? I think, Those are the two options, in my opinion. I think, honestly, the best one is, like, a bird. And here's why. Because I think I think one of the biggest things that like people in zombie apocalypse usually struggle with is communication. And you know, back in the day, we were able to like train birds to like, you know, send messages out. So I think sort of in in theory, mm-hmm. it could be possible to send messages with a bird. That is true. What it more was is birds would have a look how they would do that is basically they would have that this is your bird's nest here it's this area my bird lives say in this birdhouse here i'm gonna kidnap this bird 
<laughs> bundle him up. Take him to fucking West Virginia or whatever. And then put the message I want to send on him, give him to my buddy, whatever, and he'll release him with the message he wants to send to me, and it'll come back because it's looking for its home. So you have to find where the bird's home is. That's how they work. Oh. It's kind of weird. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So just I think that it was, it was, it was, I've, someone told me that, and I was like, it was I, a bird person at a fair. Up until this point, fair. I really did genuinely think that people taught birds how to do that because that made sense to me. It's a two thing. That it just that's what it sounded like they did. They just kind of explained it that when I was like, oh, I mean, why would I disbelieve? They just oh, the bird flies the message there. Like, I think that makes. Well, sense. that makes so much more sense. I was like, yeah. As soon as someone told me that, and I, it was a guy at a bird fair. And I was like, bro, how did I not know this? Like, this is I'm this so feels stupid. like this feels like when you find out that like rats were not the cause of like the plague or some shit. And you're like, wow. I feel Wait, rats weren't the cause of the plague. You know, like, rats weren't the reason that the plague happened? Oh, no, explain. I'm confused uh, now. So, the the reason, like, the Black Plague, or, like, yeah, like, the Black Plague happened in back in the day wasn't be technically because of the rats. It was because of, like, okay. the, was the bugs, or the, the little termites, not termites, like, the little ticks on them. Mm-hmm. So those would, like, spread from the rats to the people. Or it would, you know, spread by, like, the rats shitting somewhere. Oh, eating. so it was the, you mean the fleas? Yeah, I knew that. I knew that it was the fleas on the rats. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying it was something totally different, and I was like, dude, I didn't even know any of this. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah, because okay, it was the fleas on the rats. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Yes, my bad. Yeah, it was. It's that. It makes me think of something like that, and you're like, wow, I feel so much more enlightened about you know this kind of thing. Big brain, big brain, big brain kind of moment. Relatively level, same level, big brain kind of thing. Also, I wanted to ask because it's coming up soon. It's coming up shortly here. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you do you watch or care for the Game Awards at all? I do because Scully does, and so like I follow them with Scully when he gets hyped about it. But like genuinely, like for me, no, I really don't. I don't follow them myself personally. Well, that's just because like again, the same with like the, I didn't. Even, I don't even know celebrities passed away. Unfortunately, half the time, and I'm like, bro, yeah. what the hell? Like, it- I'm just out of the. I'm a I'm a boomer at heart, man. Dude, isn't that how everyone should be? A boomer at heart? Should be, yes. Yeah. But, like, it, what was it, what the fuck was I talking about beforehand? Uh, uh, Game Awards. Game Awards, yeah. So, like, for me, I really actually do like watching the Game Awards because a lot of them, like, present... A lot of the uh, things they announced there are actually pretty cool. Like, we got the... Like, we got a Sonic Frontiers stuff there one time. We got uh, that new Hogwarts game. Hogwarts Legacy. Which actually looks oh yeah, that fun. looks pretty good. That game looks. Fun. It does look fun. Like uh, stuff like that. I think. I also like uh, I like the idea of like the game awards. I like uh, I like having like, a big spectacle for like a an award. Like oh, this is the game. I like the concept year. of like supporting that kind of stuff. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think that I think it's that I think it's cool, and it's obviously trying to be like the Oscars, but for video games. Yeah, I mean, and, like I'm uh, all for it though. Yeah, except we have less Will Smith smacking people. I ain't gonna lie, I thought that was kind of stupid when he was acting. He was acting a fool there. Yeah, it is. It was also, like, it, that joke, that meme that spawned from it got old extremely mm-hmm. fast. I think that was... Point like, five like, minutes later. Yeah, meme it really died, did. Like, that's probably the fastest dying meme I've ever seen. Faster than... I, 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 never mind. I, ain't, I was gonna make an edgy joke, but yeah, that <laughs> meme died really fast, dude. Like, it was just ridiculously stupid. Dude, I was on Twitter. It was, like, the first thing I saw when I got on there. I was like, haha, this is pretty funny. And I got to the second one, and I was like, oh, this is funny. And the third one, like, immediately you're afterwards, like, oh, I was like, okay. Is this I funny? I get it. And then you get to the last one, you're like, fuck, I fucking get it, dude. Is this funny? But yeah. And it, it surprises me. I, I kind of, in my heart of hearts, kind of, kind of think it was almost kind of staged. The slap. Because it makes it makes sense to me, because, like... Yeah, I agree. Like, honestly, I, I was just thinking for a second, but I kind of agree. I think it was. Yeah, because it, it almost seems like an instrument to, like, make people talk about it. Because, like... That, you know, or, like, it was just him making a scene for no... Because he could knew he'd get away with it more than anything, like, too. Like, either one of them. Mm-hmm. Which is probably more more likely, but still, like, it, it was dumb. It was cringe. It was, it was fucking cringe, like, but, like... I'm also for, like, supporting, like, you know, like, defending, like, someone's honor and, you know, whatnot. But, like, dog, like, don't be acting Which is fool. weird because you, you saw in the video, like, right before he smacks him, after he says the joke, you can see that he's laughing. 
yeah. and he's smiling and then about maybe it. it like takes a minute I, I almost feel like someone wants to text him like dog you're gonna let that shit slide and then he was like oh hell nah I ain't gonna let that shit slide I gotta fight him now yeah when I when I first saw it I was like yeah you know you you got you got to be careful with what you say you can't just be spe- you can't just be talking about some people's girls like that and then like afterwards I was like wait a minute no it's not even that bad of a joke like yeah he shouldn't be making fun of his wife or whatever but like at the same time it's like it's not worth causing a scene and being like dramatic about it yeah, even he- if he meant it with like a rude intention so what fuck him be the bigger person, I know. and do not go up there and bitch slap him. Like, come on, man, that wasn't even. Like, come on, over a dog. fucking like, GI Jane joke. Yeah, like I wouldn't even. It's not even. It's barely even a fucking insult, too. That's the craziest part. Because like GI Jane was like a cool fucking person. Like you know, if someone compared me to like, well, it, it wasn't that. I heard it was the part about him making the joke about like when when. Like, you know, if Will Smith ever was done with her, you know, he, he would go take a swing at her or whatever. He'd want to have a pass it or something like that. Yeah. Which, like, I get that's not okay, but, like, just because that's not okay or not the right thing to say does not mean fucking, like, go and, like, commit an assault he on someone. To go, like, it's just fucking yeah. gorilla mode on someone. He going ham! Oh, that fucking, that fucking audio line is stuck in my head for, like, the past week. Like, oh my goodness, oh my damn. Oh my, my damn, goodness. oh my goodness, he going ham. He going ham. I find that shit so fucking stupid and funny. I find it kind of funny. I find it kind of sad. Oh lord, he gonna go ham. Oh, I have no idea why, but I thought you were gonna say, oh lord, he gonna kiss my ass. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. You were just here when you wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> he is just like me for real. Bro, honestly, if you aren't homosexual around the homies, are you really even homies? Around my brother in Christ, I always am. Always am. Man, the- <laughs> it's it's like when I go into when I first started my Minecraft server, the first thing I enable, the first mod I enable is homosexual. Homosexuality in the chat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't need achievements when I can be homosexual. Dude, do you remember that fucking meme where it's like uh when the during the Pride Month, like the hashtags for like all the Pride stuff would be gay and be like rainbow themed, and mm-hmm. there would be like gay, well hashtag gay, hashtag lesbian, hashtag bisexual, hashtag trans, and it'd be like hashtag kissing my homies on the lips, and the homies on the lips yes. would be blank, <laughs> and they're like, see, it's not gay. <laughs> Facts. This is it's a, it's just weird. it's just friendship. It's it's just a powerful friendship. Imagine having to explain to your, your girl, I'm like, sorry, my powerful friendship with my boys. It eventually overcame me. I wouldn't, wow, you, you bro, bro, I'm at a loss for words. Why would you explain it? It's simply meant to be. Vermintide is one of those games that I actually kind of wanted to try, but I never, I never, like, uh, I feel like I have to have, like, a PC to play that game. You know? Yeah, I'm not gonna really stream. It's not letting me stream right now. And yes, you do need to have a PC, but it's not that demanding. It's like you play Left 4 Dead. This is like Halo Reach level graphics, man. Yeah. I but my question: Are you gonna get Dark Tide? I'm thinking about it. I really, I'm really am. I'm Dude, thinking it's gonna I'm, be awesome. I'm gonna buy it for real. I don't even care. What was that other one? The other Warhammer game that's coming out soon. The the like pixel first person shooter one. Oh, that one. The one that God, almost that the so ones that's wet. like Doom. Yeah, that one's so fucking hot. I can't remember what it's called. And then there's also another one for the Switch that's out right now. It's like the the orc uh like a uh, dungeon crawler one. You go around like getting loot. And, like, yeah, I did see something about that. I I'm I'm all down for uh more more Warhammer inspired games, honestly. I agree. Warhammer, I was literally talking about it with uh Crimson earlier today. Yeah, Warhammer's just one of those things where it's like it started out where, and it still is very much copied from a lot of other things and inspired directly from a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. But over the years, they've slowly taken each piece of the lore, looked at it, rewritten it, slightly altered it to make it more, one, believable, two, better just designed and written. And like at this point, it's just really great, honestly. Honestly, dude, I, I fucking love like the fact that you can like just dive in head first. It's like a shit ton of lore about like certain factions. You know, most of it's actually pretty fucking good. It really is. 
like I would I would love to see uh like a lot more uh, Skaven books though cuz like I you know maybe it's probably cuz like you know they don't actually sell the, the a lot of the books in the stores most of that stuff is like online kind of thing you have to buy it online I haven't been to a game store in Lord knows, dog. Since the last time I saw you, probably like I just I just don't have the money at this point. Dude, honestly, I get that. Cause like I like the feeling of being in like a like a local game store. It's a it's a good feeling. It's like when you enter Barnes. I do too. I I just can't afford to get anything there, and I hate yeah. to go there, and like just not get nothing. I feel all the time I go to like the small ones. Like if I'm like you know if it's like a like granted honestly I've bought enough stuff to support those store each store individually for probably like a year, but like <laughs> that's still like I hate to go all the time and like just train off them and at the same time it's also it's it's most of them are kind of far away from me. Yeah, I get that. I I definitely feel that because like there's only like a like one or two like really around here for me. Which so, ones are those? The we have the the games workshop one like up in uh up where you are and then there's like one in between us like halfway where it's uh the gamers guild but i mean if you're going to the games workshop one there's also the hobbit which is just as close oh yeah and there's yeah. also ha what is it hobby town yeah, yeah hobby town so there's two more at least and on top of that i believe there's actually a few other ones i haven't even been to I know uh, back where my dad lives in South Carolina, there's one nearby called Firefly, and that place is so fucking cool, dude. I love being there. I recently went there when I went down to my dad's for Thanksgiving, and just was there just for the vibes. I didn't buy anything. I just was there, like, looking around, having a grand time. I feel like a like a little kid in, like, a Toys R Us. Man, it's trying to OD on the vibes. Exactly. <laughs> OD on the vibes. Dude, honestly, when you get that good vibe... It, it's hard to go back. Dude, you know what? Like, do you like those horrible feelings like where it's like you listen to something so sad it's good, you know? Yeah, I get that. I yeah. definitely get that. I've just heard that what's Die For You by uh, Joji, mm -hmm. Pink Guy or whatever. That shit has me fucking broken up, dog. Like, that, god damn, like, it's good, but like, damn, it cuts deep. There's some, there's some songs when I was younger that used to make me cry. And I, they still kind of do today. There are ones, yeah, I, I know it should be, yeah, it makes you want to cry, but you just don't, really. Yeah. I it, feel that. It gets, it gets you in that emotional, like, sadness kind of feeling. That emotional coaster, I feel that. You emotional roller coaster. Sad. I fuck, I, listen, I, I know that's like a, I, I think you listen one of your favorite memes. No, it's not my favorite, it's my least favorite. Okay, I was about to say, because like, we're not going to talk about, we're not gonna talk about it. I we're not going to talk about that, dog. I hate I, I do too. You were the one that said it was funny, and I was like, "Dog, I hate that shit so much." I. Anyways, we're we're not talking about that on the stream. <laughs> that was terrible. That was like the equivalent of like the worst thing you could imagine in your life, but times two and a half. Not just two, but two and a half. Like, it was shit was bad. Yeah. Honestly, just I remember when that was going around for like m like a month and a half or some shit like that, and that shit was super fucking annoying. And our group chat. You know, it's not gonna go around for a month. What? This pipe bomb about to mail you. <laughs> that wouldn't go over for a month. It'd be like a this second. prime shipping is gonna be a day and a half, boy. <laughs> yeah. Open it up day one. Bam. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. I fucking the it's you know messed up, but I fucking love the homemade pipe bomb fucking memes. Those ones are so fucking funny. Like they the, really are funny. The, the, the skinwalker Dude. at my door, the mailman. Dude, listen, listen. I found some YouTube videos, and I ain't gonna lie. It is surprisingly easy and tempting, apparently, to make a nuclear reactor at home. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. It's a... I'm like, sh sh like, I'm, I am this, if I could get a machining lathe to, like, cut the aluminum and, like, the stuff I need for the pressure vacuum, dude, I would fucking make a nuclear reactor in this backyard dog like oh god that's why they don't teach it at school they know people are, they know people are corrupted to... enough to do this but i'm actually corrupted enough to actually do it that's the worst part dude honestly that shit is so fucking that shit is honestly kind of amazing that you can do so much that you can't that you don't really think that you can at home 
Like, it's amazing you, that you can make a mm-hmm. nuclear power plant at your house in your basement. I gotta be honest, like, some of the sh- like, God, like, you know, it's a terrible thought. Like, you know, like, those, those, like, toxic like, mentalities you keep, but, like, you do not care. Yeah. One of them is, like, some of the shit the CIA has done, the inhumane shit, like, it is so crazy, but, like, I don't seem like, dog, like, I would love to, like, fucking see the, it, like, be involved in some of this terrible shit. Like, god damn, like, if the CIA yeah, need, like, another fall guy, to, like, if they need another fall guy, man, like, for some crazy thing, like, hit me up, dog. Like, my resume would, my would apply resume. perfectly. Dude, yeah, honestly, I think if most people could, they would, like, have a chance with the CIA to work with them, they would. Like, no You'd doubt. be surprised. I think, no. I, uh, I think you missed my joke. I probably did. It's okay. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> maybe maybe maybe, maybe one. Uh, maybe, don't worry about it. Anyways, so what else were we talking about tonight, my boy? Uh, my boy, my brother. Let me look at the. Let me look at the thingy. Oh, I didn't even finish my whole thing about the fucking the game awards thing. Oh yeah, game yeah, awards. Yeah. So, uh, do you know which games are, like, up for, like, Game of the Year? Um, no, I don't, actually. Uh, I know... I think it's actually quite an interesting year, because there's, like, a... It's an interesting... Like, with most of, like, the years, you know, you get your usual, uh, fucking... Mm-hmm. Like, The Last of Us 2, um... Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Red Dead Redemption makes sense. Last of Us 2, absolutely oh, yeah. not. Oh, and Doom Eternal was, uh, 2020. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, those kind of games. So... This year, we have an interesting lineup because I was ex- there's a couple of them on here I didn't expect. We have Elden Ring, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, A Plague Tale, and then the two like very strange ones to me at least. You have Stray, and this game called Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. I've heard of both of those. Okay. Yeah, they're both like. I really like Stray, and it is one of my favorite games of yeah. the year, but I didn't actually think that like it would be game of the year worthy, you know? It wasn't that. I gotta be honest, I think it's Elden Ring, and if anyone else, at, at least oh, yeah, as no, far sure. as I can tell. Like, even people I know that don't give a crap about that stuff, like, and know about Elden Ring. Like, my dad knows about Elden Ring, and he has no clue what Dark Souls even is. He doesn't even know what Game of the Awards is, and he know knows about Elden Ring. Ring. The sun. Yeah, he doesn't know Salute the Sun, he doesn't know Solaire, but, like, he knows fucking Elden Ring. He, like, it, in that game, the memes are still prevalent in the way it's like, they don't see any more stray memes. Do you see any more, gosh darn, of any of those? I see some of the uh, God of War ones, but that's just because the game just came out recently, yeah. you know? Like, come on. That doesn't really count. I honestly have not seen, like, a, like Elden Ring when it first released was such a big hit. I don't think I remember a game being a big of a hit like that since, like, Skyrim. Didn't it, like, make record sales of the most, like, pre-orders ever Elden for Ring, a game? I believe so, yeah. So, like, if that's the case, doesn't that automatically win? Like, isn't it stupid to give any- it to anything else? If that I game like... literally sold the most. It doesn't matter how much people paid for it or played it. If they fucking bought it, they bought it. Like, dog, that's, that's, what, that's what the sales count, right? Like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like Elden Ring is kind of like the clear, obvious choice to win, and I'm pretty sure yeah. it's going to. And, you know, much deserved. Elden Ring is phenomenal. It's amazing. I, I agree. I it, but it, I have so much fun with it. How long did you, have you uh, sunk to that darn game? Honestly, I don't even know. I, think, I know it's like over 50. I've sunk 160 into on PC, and then uh, I think it was like 48 on Xbox One. Yeah, that game is really, really fucking fun, and it's also like really, really replayable. It has, it has the same charm to me. God, as, like, you it's know, so Skyrim, good. Where, like, it really it's, is. It's really fun to start up and play and start a new game. It's one of those games, exactly. Like with those ears, I love to watch some of these. This, for instance, like you know, like that guy, the backlogs, Lemon. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of like plays and like challenge runs of like Dark Souls and whatnot, and other games like that. And, I, and they always seem so tedious to start with like crossbow only and you only get a crossbow like midway through the game or whatever the hell. I, that's not necessarily accurate that's just an example and so like it's just these tedious chores but like Elden Ring is such a game that you can start 
and you're right ready to go mm-hmm. and enjoy. Like you can just have a fun time, do your thing. Like it, it, it's it's refreshingly great to start over again. Mm-hmm. Another game for me that's like super fun to start over and continuously replay over and over again is Doom Eternal. Probably because it's one of my favorite video games ever. But like both just... Dooms. I've fucked over for myself, honestly, because I've restarted them so many times on different accounts and different savings and platforms that I've like the early missions. I've just drank. I, I do not want to play them. So I just I haven't gotten very far into either of them. I I have bought Doom Eternal for almost every console I have. Not nice. available, Dang. except for my Xbox. The one, you know, it's home console. I, mean, I just have it up. Actually, I don't think I have it on my Switch. I think I just have it on my PC. I, that's how I mainly played it on my Switch, because that's what I had for, like, a very long time. Because uh, my PS4 was in the was in the living room, and I didn't, you know, I don't I don't want to go in there. Other yeah. people are in there. Socialized? Yeah. Dude, my favorite, well, not my favorite, the way I beat Doom 1, mm-hmm. uh, 2016... I should say, was uh, when I was taking my sister, and it was when I was just, it was just me babysitting and my younger brother, who was a teenager at the time, and pretty much, you know, almost my age, and then my little sister, and she just happened to have, like, her kidneys fucking explode. So, like, she had to go in for surgery or whatever the hell. And, like, I was sitting there in the ER room for, like, 48 zillion years, yeah. and I just played Doom 1 or Doom 2016 on my Switch. I just beat the game like that. And I've ever been like, hell yeah, I just killed this, the uh, Cyber Demon or whatever the hell. Oh, the, yeah, uh, the fucking the, spider lady. Yeah, and I was like, hell yeah. And uh, my sister was over there just like, Ugh. Just in pain, agonizingly. Dude, that reminds me of that yeah. fucking image of like the guy who's like playing Call of Duty while his wife's giving birth to his kid. That, that, that is me. If there is a crucible match going, well, I'm gonna have to be. I'm like, honey, been... honey. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I have. You have to wait. Just, just give me a second to finish this crucible match, and then we can go to the ER. Okay. All right, all right. Will you just, just put him back in there. Put him back. He doesn't need to come out yet. Put him yeah. Back. I'm, I still <laughs> just have respawn the baby. Right respawn the baby. I still have to finish this battle pass, woman. Oh. Dude, so the new season in Destiny 2 starts in like uh mm-hmm. like December seventh or whatever. Do you know what level I am in the season pass? Aren't you three hundred and three? Oh fuck yeah. Three hundred and um there is only you only get stuff up to one hundred, so like I've just tripled it for no reason. Damn. Dude, no no like ain't no, I feel like that's a flex. And then you know the worst part is yeah. I have run into people that are see so you can buy season ranks up to once you read a hundred, reach a hundred. Other than that, you have to just play. As far as I'm aware, okay. you have to just play to earn that XP, and it gets harder and harder and harder as you get higher and higher. But I ran, have run to people that are a couple hundred, and I ran to a dude the other day that was one thousand and like one hundred and forty-eight. God damn! And I don't even know how you could physically do that. Like I, I was like, what? Dude, do you wait? Wait, wait, hold it. Also, for the battle pass, you said you're three hundred forty-four of one hundred. 303 out yeah, of 100. Okay, 303 of, like, 100. Do you get anything, like, extra from the battle pass, like, afterwards? Like, nope. After- <laughs> so, basically, that, that's just passively leveling up. Each week, okay. your first five season ranks are extra quick to, like, their double XP, and then after that, that's whatever. So, like... But, I mean, I mean, theoretically, after every couple of ranks, that's, like, every 10 ranks, you get, like, a special, like, cosmetic engram, which okay. gives you a chance at, like, something decent looking, but Honestly, you, the cosmetic engrams are a scam because, like, 99% of the time, you're going to get some ass-tier shit yeah. that's, like, not even useful. The shitty gear. Yeah. But that not good Zaza. Not the Zaza we were looking for. But I think we're also running up here on our time. So, Damn. if you liked what you heard for some reason, but of course you do. <laughs> You of course. can subscribe, you can comment down below about things you want us to talk about, some topics for next time, and yeah, our uh, social media will be leaked below. And with that being said, you all have a, a wonderful day, a lovely day. Goodbye. <laughs> Zaza.